welcome back to the Fast Lane Lifestyle with myself, Asafa Powell, the Sub 10 King. I haven't said that in a while, but I'm going to start saying that again. The Sub 10 King and my beautiful wife, Alicia Powell. You just had to show up. Power. Show up and show out on me with Powell. the Sub 10 King. My, right. <laughs> when we were upstairs just now, she was like, you forgot I was a model? You know what I mean? I was, I was, you know, trying to give her some tips, you know, on how to, you know, remove shirt so and all I'm that stuff. So I'm actually wearing his shirt, right? And obviously I have a full face of makeup on. So he's like, don't get any on. So when I was putting it on, he's like, oh, oh, I'm like, yeah, you forgot I was a model. Like we know how to change and do the outfit switches without getting any makeup on the outfit. And you the know, fit. Women, you, women, you like to wear men clothes too much. Yeah, because, you know, just going for the, sometimes just comfort, the baggy, mm, it's, it's not right. everyday skin tight. It's all right. <laughs> I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. But so, this week has been a roller coaster, eh? In eh? what terms? Eh? Like, eh? in what terms? <laughs> <laughs> like with, you know, with, you know, the kids, you know, not feeling well. Yeah. You, you know, um, not feeling well. And I mean, we we did a lot this week, you know, but... I'm the strong one, as usual. You know what I mean, my my system, my system is super strong. So you know I, mean? I always I have a rebuttal on that. When the kids are sick, I am the one that's waking up with them while he is like Even he when they're sleeps, not sick, you're waking he up. sleeps dead. So you're always rested. So of course your immune system no, is going to no. fight off viruses. And when they're sick, they're always on me, not on you. That's not a, That's not. You, hey guys, like, this is when you I know wake he's up lying. All the time in the night. Look at the smile. <laughs> I wake up all the time in the night. Um, I might not, you know, jump around and be all excited as you. It's not about being excited. Uh, you're like, uh, uh, like you hear as, as the slightest sound you hear, you're you're jumping up, like looking like you, you ever see those lizards when they hear a sound, they're like, that's Alicia. She, the minute the kids go like, mm, she's jumping up, looking all over the place. That's not true. I think um, parenting, it's, mothers it's and dads have it's a true. different way of parenting. Yeah. Um, number, number one, the thing is, I will be coming to the room and he's in the room with like the two boys. They're getting into something and he's just there on his phone. La da 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 da. Like, oh, but why would he get into that? Um, Hello, he's two. And they're four. Right, so there's a difference, all right? No, I'm not gonna I'm not <laughs> gonna run behind them twenty four or seven right around the clock. Sometimes I'm have to just bust them in and learn. So speaking on that, do you I have a question <laughs> for you? So we're gonna play a little like questionnaire um game with each other right now because I know that he really knows me, but obviously with time we change our perceptions and everything change. But before we get into that, I want to ask you, do you think Honesty is the best policy in a relationship. I also am asking the viewers that. Do you think? It's the, it's, the, it's the best policy in life. Always? Like, is there certain things that you think completely you have to be honest about? Yeah. I mean, there are some things that... Uh, uh, well, let's, let me not drift away from the, the topic you're talking about in a relationship. Or any kind um, of relationship, yeah. like with your partner, friendship, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. I mean, there are some instances where, you know, um, where for me, instead of like lying to you about something, I'd rather just not say anything. You know what I mean? But so isn't that I lie? try. It's not a lie. <laughs> I, I just didn't say anything. You know what I mean? Like if I walk, if I, if I, sometimes like I'm feeling like, sick or feeling some pain or whatever it is and you're like you, you notice that I'm moving a bit slower than usual and um, I just don't say anything I act like I pretend to be fine you know just so that you don't worry about me too much so what if you're in a, a group situation and like somebody wants to pursue singing and they absolutely suck at singing or someone has bad breath like stuff like that is honestly always the best policy, and you know, yeah, like in a relationship, when... in a relationship, that <laughs> if your mouth stink, I'm gonna tell you that your mouth stinks. Like, go brush your teeth. In, <laughs> if my wife mouth stink, if your toes stink, if your if if your armpit eerie, 
if whatever it is, I am going to tell you. Okay. You know so I mean? what if it's like in a, a friend group situation? I'm going to tell the But friend. you know that the person's going to take this very personal. Like how no, do you... No, I try to. I try to make sure, you know, work my way around it so they don't take it too personal. But I mean, if it's the truth, why, you know, if you take it personal and mm. don't want to be my, my friend anymore, it's not like I'm embarrassing you in, in public. If I pull you one side and say, yo, you, you know, you I realize your breath kind of a smell. Speaking of that, you know that has mean? actually happened yeah. to him, guys. Little secret here. It's happened to him mm-hmm. with somebody it happened he to was... Me, it happened to me with, you know, females and... Talking and to, to trying to wife. give yeah. talks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it happened most of because I'm, I don't... I mean, some men, you just, just leave them alone. You know, but like females, if I smell a female's breath and it's bad, I'm going to say that because I don't think fem- no, fe- that's very un- unattractive. I don't think female <laughs> should a female should ever have bad breath. Yeah, I believe honesty is the best policy, but sometimes in friendship for me, I feel like it's sticky because um not these days, I guess depending on the type of person you're dealing with, sometimes mm-hmm. people tend to take honesty as you being like a hater mm-hmm. or they just take it in such a negative connotation. So mm-hmm. there's some people it's just very hard to be honest with. Like, I would rather I tell you and you tell them. Like, mm-hmm. and sometimes we're dealing with like female friendships. Like, I feel as if that if it's coming from like woman to woman, it can mm-hmm. be taken the wrong way, which is like if I'm coming to you with love, mm-hmm. you should know that it's always going to be love. So sometimes like I'd rather send like my guy friend and have him say it because mm-hmm. I find that sometimes, I don't know, the estrogen to estrogen so when, sometimes just... When you really sit down, when fight. you really sit down yeah. and, and you look at that friendship, mm-hmm. if you really look deep into that friendship, you know, it's, you know, what, what is the friendship based on? You, you have to find out what that friendship is based on because if it's a real genuine friend mm-hmm. that will stick with you through thick and thin. And they they can't if you if if you're going to them and say, Hey, I noticed this. And right. they, they're gonna be offended that I mean they you just have to take read a step the back. Room. Yeah, you just have to <laughs> step back and read the room. You know, because that's remember the last conversation both of both of us had. Yeah. I was saying that some friendship, you know, it, it too draining. It's draining mm-hmm. to try and save the friendship. It's draining to try and maintain the friendship. Mm-hmm. You know, to try and like some friends, you always have to be reaching out to them. Right. Sometimes you sit back and you you kind of observe, and you realize, all right, this time has passed. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even your your even like a special day has passed, and you don't hear anything from that friend. Mm-hmm. Then you know maybe you just have to. Say all right. Just Read don't just don't room. just don't be the one to send that first message again. Right. Also, now, what's my favorite color? I'm gonna try and guess yours. Do you know? Box cover. <laughs> Have we ever um because today, had a discuss, discussion today, about colors? We're upstairs and I'm like, he's trying to dress me. So you know heels will look good with this and this and this and that. So I had told him that, hey, you know, anytime you, I get new heels, I'm going to just wear them around the house to break them in. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? He's like, don't tell me. I already know you're going to break them in around the house. So do you know my favorite color? Yeah, you have a favorite color, babe? <laughs> like, Honestly, like, there's not one thing that you have in the house that you have, like, two or three or four in this, like, the same color. Like, a, like, a, like you don't have a color scheme going on. With nothing really. I just go with the vibe. I mean, just, yeah, I, I've never really seen you like obsess over like one color. Mm-hmm. But I feel like with you, it's probably white. Me? You have a lot of like white tees. No, because I sweat a lot. So what, do you have a favorite color? I don't think so. No? I don't think so. Okay, so I guess mm. we're, we're on the same, mm. same vibe. I wear a lot of white tees because, I mean, I get very hot. It's very easy to, like, you just put on a white tee with anything. Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, white is not really a color anyway, so it doesn't count. <laughs> it's not a color. It's a shade. 
black people love white, you know, all white mm-hmm. parties, black all people, white. Black is that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I want to be as a kid? And I'm going to guess you. Right? What did you want to be? Yeah. Oh, snaps. <laughs> Snap. No, you said the other day. No, you said the other day. Again. <laughs> Repeat it the other day. I'm on the spot. I'm on the spot. You want to be... What's your word with? So yours would have been mechanic, right? Mm? Something to do in that department. Is that what you... I don't even know if I really know yours. Mechanic? Engineer? Before Did... you knew you could run, like mm-hmm. before you even got to that department, what did you want to be? I was just that kid who wanted to be everything. Okay, wanted so to be I a police, see. I didn't know that. Doctor, soldier. But I everything. know I've told you. Hmm? I've told you what I wanted to be. Yeah, you right did. Now. You did. And you said you said last week or a week before last week. You repeated. <laughs> my brain. My brain. My brain. Brain Sorry, dream. I wanted to um maybe be I'm a using too much more or um a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using too much more wash. <laughs> Where was I born? Ghana. Where in Ghana? Adaf. Oh? Adafo. 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 Linstead. Yeah. You're you're a mm-hmm. tin? Mm. Oh, is it right? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Linstead Hospital. What's yeah. my favorite food? Your favorite food? Oh. Um what a um the the um <laughs> is that going like the, this? No man, when we went to Ghana, it's like you came back you know a bit and you know with a little bit more weight because of that. <laughs> um name again. So I guess honesty the, is the, the best policy. The um, <laughs> Not that you came back brown. with some weight. A brownie look. Uh, planted make it a uh, what name? It's not the food. Not food food. The the other thing. What kenke? Ken is kenke. Now I don't know if that's my favorite food. That's all you you eat in Ghana. It's kenke. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like that's probably not a good judgment because I, I haven't been back since I was like ten. Like mm-hmm. to spend that much time in Ghana, so I just mm-hmm. want to see eat everything that I missed out on or I felt Curry, like I missed out rice on. Curry for me, <laughs> <laughs> you if are, it's not, you're definitely it's, curry, goat, rice and peas and fried chicken. No, correct. But you've like, when we, that's all you've been like, Eating I, I, here. I feel I like, think my I feel like from that. the, from I met you and we're talking about like food from Ghana. Mm-hmm. That's all you, you always talk about. Okay. So maybe I just don't know. Myself like that. That's all I talk about. The cow, the cow skin thing with the okra, with the okra and the bangu and okra soup. Yeah, yeah. I would say that rather more than the king K. Yeah. No, no, I wasn't saying that alone. You don't eat that alone. You know, I'm gonna eat it with with the thingy. <laughs> no, with the thingy. All right, we're moving <laughs> on. <laughs> okay, so have I grown as a person since you met me? And is it like good change or a bad change? And now remember, honesty is the best policy, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, the grown part, 100%. Um, if you had grown, 100%. Um, yeah, I would say in a good way. A good way. I mean, there, there are some things that... It's not your fault in a sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like you you were brought into you know a situation and you know, I guess, you know, that part wouldn't be I mean, you wouldn't call it growth in a sense. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yes, you have grown a lot. Um, two times too. <laughs> <laughs> I would With say two boys. <laughs> right. I would say definitely you have grown. Mm. You're a lot more vocal. I mean, as everyone has been saying, and also mm-hmm. in the terms of like getting to know you and being with you, what, 10 years, 10 years now? Mm-hmm. Wow, that, that's a long time. Time flick, man. Time I'm does, telling time you, does, you really took away my hot girl years. Time does right? a flick, but you're still hot, babe. You're, you're even hotter <laughs> than before. Hot. Thanks. Hot. Thanks. I'm a hot girl. You're hot. 
But I know you've grown. <laughs> and I think also since you, I'm, I don't want to bring like, you know, your age into it. But since mm. you turned four zero, mm -hmm. I also see more of like a difference in like you setting boundaries as well. Mm -hmm. um, and being confrontational because that was another no, thing. Man. Like no. if something was wrong and it was bothering him, he would never say anything. He would just kind of like sit there and just say, oh, well, I'm just going to let it go. But you can see it bothering him. Of course, I will agree with you because um, in a sense, mm -hmm. in a sense for me, there was, there was a lot of room for me to grow. You know, I was, I was a bit, um, you know, more on the idle, you know, kind of, you know, you know, Fool in, like, like to, you know, just do idle stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, I think I've matured a lot more, you know, even, even, I mean, maybe if I was running now, like, you know, a lot of things would be, you know, different, you know, and, you know, people who, you know, I'm talking to now, you know, like, I, I never used to talk, you know, period. Like, you know, I, I think I just, I mean, I never used to care that much either. You know, to talk. Yeah. You know, if somebody says something, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. And that's it. And I'm good with that. I don't <laughs> I don't even know if the person was offended or even cared to know if they're offended. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think, you know, I've, yeah, I've grown a lot and uh, matured a lot when it comes to, you know, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always had respect, but I just didn't care for like conversations and stuff like that. That's true. What did mm -hmm. um our friend Peter, he said... When I first met Saf, he's literally at the most you can get out of him is like five to six words. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that, Saf? Sometimes it's one. Good. You think they're going to run well? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man and then yeah, now, man. look, he yeah, has a whole podcast and he's mm -hmm. talking. And so, right. Even my coach, know, even my coach, my coach was like, Saf, are you talking? You, know? <laughs> you are. talking. If, if we could have, like, if we, if we had you talking... Way back in like 2008 and all those times, man, be like you'll be a different person, you yep. know. And um, he watches all our podcasts and he's like, "Yeah, stuff you're talking." Man. <laughs> <laughs> he's proud to see mm. that side of you come out. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. June is Men's Mental Health Month. Mental health is just as important as physical health, and it's crucial for men to feel supported. And heard. We know that juggling career, kids, and everything else in between can feel overwhelming. It's important to have a space that you can talk things out, and that's where therapy comes in. It's such a valuable tool for learning positive coping skills and becoming the best version of yourself. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's a great online therapy service that can connect you to a licensed therapist wherever you are. It's convenient and flexible so you can fit it into your busy schedules. They offer messaging, talking on the phone, or video sessions. You simply fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a therapist. And if you feel like you need a different one, you can easily switch for free. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Take a moment. Visit betterhelp.com slash powells today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash powells. What is, I guess this would be towards the both of us. What are some of the things that you're most grateful for? Um, life. Um, Health. Family, mm -hmm. you know, I know family first, you know, all my kids, mm -hmm. you know, a wife, of course. Um, and just to be able to, you know, have a roof over my head, be comfortable and, you know. Not your legs? You're not grateful for your legs? Life, no life. My legs, no life. It's part of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You consider life too, right? It's have life in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, great. The yeah, of course. Gave you of the course, roof I'm grateful for head, my talent. Yeah, 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 my talent for sure. You know, I'm grateful for that. You know, that's 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 why I'm here today, mm -hmm. sitting in this room. You know, what I mean, um, my legs, my talent. 
right life (laughs) health i have to add Mm -hmm. that in like every time i get sick or every time i feel like something about it you know like something's coming on i'm always like this is one thing we take for granted always like waking up breath Mm -hmm. um health because when you don't feel good it's just not it's just not nice so when you wake up and you're healthy and you can breathe Mm -hmm. you're able to move around without any restrictions that is something you have to be thankful for every day Mm -hmm. like last night I was in bed just early and I'm like I just don't like how I Mm -hmm. feel so Mm -hmm. for me that's the most like on on the top Mm -hmm. of my list we count that as a small blessing when Mm -hmm. in it's really a big blessing Mm -hmm. to be able to to deal Uh, with that and I mean for for me, mm-hmm. I know, I mean, this is one of the topics that you wanted to touch on, but I, I, I'm also grateful for the way that I was brought up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it was very strict, but you know what I mean? It, it, um, it allows me to have, you know, respect, you know, be humble, you know, and all that, and all those things. So, you know, I'm grateful for. for my, so my besides, opinion. besides like respect and humility, do you find that there was a lot of pressure? Um, being like both of your parents being like pastors, do you think there was a lot of pressure trying to make sure you walk this straight narrow path? Even though, do you also think that that contributed to you kind of like going zigzag instead mm-hmm. of like this? <laughs> mm-hmm. You think um, so? It's a lot of it's a lot of pressure. When just one of your parents are pastors, mm-hmm. you know, if your parents are together and even one of them are pastors, it's you know it it's a lot of pressure, you know, because I mean, growing up growing up as a kid, like only only knew one thing, and um, I had an idea about you know other things, but only knew one thing, and um, I remember. I remember, um, I don't remember if I was like nine, mm-hmm. eight or nine, and you know, it was a good church, boom, church, boom. And I remember they were having um, baptism service mm-hmm. at church. You know, I was there at church, and you know, being the kid I am, and uh, clapping hands and singing, I see my mom just look at me and say, Go in the pool and I'll get baptized. I was like, hmm? You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it wasn't like a choice, you know what I right. mean? It was like, yo, go and get baptized. So, you know, I went in the pool, got baptized. You know, that, I didn't know what it meant, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. really at that age, you know. So, you know, that type kind of pressure. And then, you know, um, when you get baptized, then you have to give a testimony. and So you had to give a testimony? Of, yeah, and stuff like that at church and... I didn't know what to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I, you know, we used to do Bible studies and stuff like that, Sunday school and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I used to just repeat stuff that I learned in Sunday school. But yeah, it's a lot of pressure. And, um, you know, and, but, you know, like I said, you know, you're, you're, you're grateful for the, the, the opportunity to learn, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, you know, then you grow and then you get to understand you know, what life is about, what church is about, you know, this and that. And then, you know, you get to move on from it. So do you think that you were able to, because hearing you speak, right, I don't, I could be wrong, but Mm -hmm. the vibe I'm getting or the way I'm interpreting it means like at that age or even now, did you really have a personal relationship with God or was it more kind of like forced? Because you said when you even did the, um, Thanksgiving, whatever mm. you had to say, mm. you would just repeat a lot of things that mm-hmm. you heard. So like I grew up in a family where it was Christianity and my mom's family, they're Muslim. Mm-hmm. So I would both be in the mosque and be at um, church. And when I saw church, like the all night, like I didn't miss a beat, literally mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. miss a beat. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. So I think with me, I was able to decide where and what um I agreed with most or what I related to the most, but I also learned how to coexist with other people's beliefs and religion and be respectful towards Mm -hmm. whatever they want to believe. Mm -hmm. But I think without that type of pressure, I was able to form a relationship like with God personally, without it Mm -hmm. kind of like being shoved down my throat, even though 
I was religiously in church and at the mosque. So do you think like you had that relationship and do you, if not then, do you have it now? I mean, um, like I said, like I said, but um, at that age, I, di I didn't understand. I didn't understand mm -hmm. anything or what it was like. I, I even laugh at church when I see people getting, you know, getting in the spirit and stuff mm -hmm. because I didn't understand you were young. it. I was very young at that age. I mean, and truth be told, you know, if it had, if it if I didn't get baptized, that they I probably would have done it on my own. Mm. You know, at some point, you know, um, but. No, I didn't. I didn't understand stand it, but I didn't know anything else. You know, um, I only knew, like I said, my home, church. We just had one TV station, like in entire Jamaica, we had one TV channel. So it's like it's what they put for you to watch. That's mm -hmm. what you see. Mm -hmm. So even Africa, I didn't know what Africa was. I thought Africa was just a poor place where you know kids don't have food mm -hmm. to eat and all that stuff. You know, I didn't know um, what America was. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know anything mm -hmm. really on the outside world. You know what I mean? I know my parents used to travel, you know, to America. And, you know, whenever they go to America, I say, all right, I'm going to get a car when, <laughs> you know, a remote car when they come back and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I was I was very young, didn't understand, mm -hmm. you know, the world. You know, I was I was I was sheltered in a right. sense because I was the last I was the last kid, you know, so I was sheltered. I mean, I get to experience, you know, a lot of things with my father because I've always been like, you know, um, I was a daddy's boy in a sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, my father would never leave me whenever he's going anywhere. That's why I'm so hands on when it comes to like cars, yeah. fixing stuff and all that stuff. You know, my father would never leave me out. So you know, I would say I learned a lot of things just hanging out with my dad, but um, with the outside world, you know, coming to Kingston and I see the light, the lights and all that stuff, you know, all that so, stuff so was new to when, me. You know? When you got to <laughs> Kingston, do you think that you then strayed a bit from like, you know, your upbringing, your relationship with God? Because like, you know, being sheltered and then now mm -hmm. it's I am outside. We are outside. I wasn't allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. Girls that like I am going to have fun now because mm -hmm. like you're saying, even if you personally didn't understand like your relationship with God, because, you know, that's just the environment you grew up in. So mm -hmm. in a sense, it's like you're not allowed to get that relationship on your own. It's just you grew up knowing uh, that. So you <clears> went crazy. Um, no. <laughs> All right. So, um, coming to Kingston, mm -hmm. you know, I, I never, never forgot about God or my upbringing being in Kingston. And then I used to go home every week to go to church. And sometimes I wouldn't come back to training because I stayed home to go to youth service on Monday and um, the choir practice, you know, and I wouldn't come back to practice until like mm -hmm. Wednesday or, or Thursday, you know. So I never forgot, you know, about church or, you know, God or nothing like that. You know, what had happened is just um, stardom happened very early for mm -hmm, me, very mm -hmm. quick for me. So when I came to Kingston my first year, you know, I was, you know, you know, normal then, you know, all of a sudden I blew up. Right. So um, I think I just never made the time to keep going back to church, back in country, because I didn't want to like go to a new church and, you know, new places and all that stuff. I always wanted to go back to the church that I grew up in, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, no, I never I never forgot about God. Um, you know, my, yes, I can have a better relationship when it comes to, when it comes to that, because like, you know, I find you reminded me, <laughs> you know, um, a lot of times, make sure you pray before you go to bed. You know, when I wake up in the morning, and did when you, you pray? Wake up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <that's> <laughs> so it's, I find, you know, um, that most times like you're like, remember, pray before you go to bed. You know, and sometimes I, I, I yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I am I the you. preacher's kid? Yeah, she's, like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes she's praying, and I'm the, I'm, and I, and I don't realize. I'm like, babe, babe, and 
And I'm, 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 trying and I'm like, to, now is not the time. You're interrupting yeah, you're like, my session. I'm praying, leave session. me alone. All right. You know I mean, yeah. But, I mean, the relationship is still there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it hasn't gone anywhere. And, I mean, God knows that. Right. I don't need to prove that to, to people. To anyone, yeah. God knows that, you know. And, um, you know, he's the one I reach out to. You know, mm. when, I mean, doubts are in in any, I mean, sometimes I, I even question, I, I question God, I talk to him, ask mm -hmm, him, you know, mm -hmm. why this happen? Why that happen? You know, but I never lose faith in God. Right. Yeah. And then like with, with our kids as well, they're very much aware mm -hmm. and like they go to a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. So they have service every Tuesday, I believe. Once a week, they're in church. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, one of Azav's teacher asking me, like, he's so well behaved. Like, do you, you know, why is he so well behaved in church? Because most of the kids don't really understand. I'm like, because, you know, I pray with them every mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their little, their Bible. So it's like we're, we're very active. Um, just because mm -hmm. you don't see us doing certain things doesn't mean that we don't have that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And like what Saf says, like to me, my relationship with God is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go out and, and prove it to anyone because I find my from my life experiences, anybody that does the most sometimes are so, they're hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Like you're a hypo Christian and you're being judgmental 100%. and let people figure it out. Like obviously I will try and, you know, tell you this is what God has done for me. But the more you're like this, like that, and then I see you doing something else and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is just, why are you judging me? Don't mm -hmm. judge people. The so. world gone to shambles. <laughs> Turn that the world gone to shambles, and people, people, it's not that people are forgetting. People are just not learning. You know what I mean, I don't think people are learning about you know God anymore and stuff like that. Uh, all people are learning about is just the new slangs and the new dances and all that stuff and new trouble. Mm -hmm. new social media all that stuff nobody's actually or, learning i also think we mean? just need to find a new way to reach people you mm -hmm. cannot reach people in a sense of always condemning them mm -hmm. you cannot reach people in a way of always judging them mm -hmm. you cannot reach people in a way of thinking you're better than mm -hmm. you know you have mm -hmm. to find a way, just to, a way to reach humanize them. each other yeah. just I was, reach I was, out i was um <laughs> i was um saying to my friend, um, Allison, yesterday, cause you know we're talking about stuff and talking about religion, and mm -hmm. you know we're, we're getting deep into it. But I was, um, I was telling him that kind of slipped me still, you know, but you lost your um, thought. <laughs> you lost your thought process. Yeah, right it, now? Kind, it kind of slipped me, slipped me a little bit. You know, is um, it coming back but, to you? <laughs> Yeah, it, no, he was saying um, something about um, multiply. Okay. You know, so oh, a lot okay. of people interpret the Bible mm -hmm. the wrong way. You know, some interpret it this way and some interpret that way. And, uh, and I'm telling him that, you know, Be who fruitful knows? and multiply, you mean that, that um, verse? Mm-hmm. Okay, so to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how did he interpret it? And how did you and interpret it? He interpreted it as once you have money, mm -hmm. you can have kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, but at the end of the day, yes, in this modern world where if you, if, you, if you can afford kids, you know, go ahead with it. But, you know, um, you know back in those days, it, it wasn't like that. You know, for, once you can have kids, but I also feel like back in those days, Multiply. there was a lot, there was a lot of war happening. Yeah. So people wanted to have a lot of kids to mm -hmm. carry on their lineage or mm -hmm. generation. And mm -hmm. then also men were also then wanted to have more wives because as a woman, you're pregnant for like 10 months. You can only have one child per year. Mm -hmm. So they needed to have the babies, you know, coming to you have war, your lineage, people are dying. Like, can you imagine living in a time where every day there is some type of, I mean, there's war happening now, but yeah. So I guess it's just Back the in way them you time interpret was different, things. Man. Yeah, it's a Back different time. Back in those time. days were different, yeah. But if you are in a, a stable situation, you're married and both parties, you guys can take on having to be mul multiply mm -hmm. and be fruitful, mm -hmm. do it because... Just know mm. your cap. I know mm. my capacity and my capacity. I think yeah. we've hit that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we, 
on on our podcast we we try to stay away from religion and all that stuff because you know it's 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 weird you know it's too weird it's too weird let's <laughs> leave it there because everybody yeah. has their opinion on things no but i think that in as a know? society we need to learn how to coexist mm-hmm. and be respectful to each other's beliefs you know i i definitely do not put out an energy that mm. I am better than you because I believe in God or, Mm. you know, I'm above you or I'm not a sinner. I don't put out that energy. But I think that's also coming from being in a household where, again, my mom's a Muslim, my dad's a Christian. Mm -hmm. Like it's split in my family. So I've learned to just coexist and respect (laughs) other people's Mm. beliefs. So I Mm. believe in what I believe, you believe in what you believe like, and we can coexist respectfully. It doesn't mm-hmm. need to be, it's always too much like, why is there almost so much war? Like, peace, respect. That's, that's how war starts, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's how it starts. We but... need more love and peace in, in the world, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, because anytime I go on social media or watch the news these days, my heart just breaks, like, honestly. So we just pray, pray. Um, Can you imagine the world if everybody was like, Oh my God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> the, oh, the sky is so beautiful. Can you imagine the world like that? You think it would be weird? It would be weird. <laughs> so we actually need the haters. Not the, we, need, we need the haters. <laughs> like, why do you always, you, you just, I, mean? I feel like you love the haters. We don't, like, we don't you need, just love. <laughs> what we don't need is crime and all that stuff. But right. we, need, we need the haters. They have, people have to have different opinions. True. You know, people have to have a mind of their own. Everybody can just get up and say, oh, my God, this light is so beautiful. <laughs> Imagine that, everybody. You get annoyed. You, know? <laughs> you get annoyed. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, haters keep eating them, man. You can't bother. So keep living. I keep can't living bother. your life. <laughs> and on that note, make sure you guys leave a, a comment or a review if you're listening on, on the audio mm-hmm. about it's honesty always the best mm-hmm. policy because we, we want to know. Let's have this conversation because I know some people are going to rebuttal and say, you know, if you, what you don't know won't kill you listen as me. well. Do you yeah. believe in that? Yeah. It, what I don't know it's won't true. kill me? Uh, listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes something might happen and let's say in a relationship uh-huh. and a lie will save your relationship. So th- this means you're, you're backpedaling on That's honesty. That's why I say I'd rather not say anything. <laughs> if something is, go- is going on, I'd rather just keep my mouth shut and not say anything. Because if I don't bring it up, yeah. then we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to have a conversation about it. And I will have to lie. So what about... So you leave that out of your thing. Do you believe in what's done in the dark will always come to light? So how does mm-hmm. that play then just, in the just honesty? Just make sure you don't stay in that dark long. <laughs> make sure... Well, on that note, I make think sure conversation you, Make done. sure you're looking at the light. <laughs> you can just run through the dark and go in that light. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, so I think on that note, this episode has Mm -hmm. been a lovely conversation and make sure, what did you just say? Repeat that again for the people in the back. Make sure you run through the lights, don't stay in the dark Run to the light, guys. Run to the light, don't stay in the (laughs) dark, Lanka. The dark, you know, might feel safe. The dark (laughs) might feel safe because nobody can see you. Nobody can see in the dark. But when... The lightning strike, the place light up. <laughs> <laughs> the lightning strike, the place does light up. <laughs> and you will, you, will, you will get caught. Oh, you man. will be seen. <laughs> so make sure you run through the dark. Boom, psh, gone. Another light. So they have to be quick, like sub 10. Quick. No, 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 no sub 10. Quick. Just run to the light. <laughs> Leave my sub 10 out of this. <laughs> <laughs> leave me, leave me alone. Oh gosh! Oh, yeah, All right. Uh, Are you good with that now? Yeah, I'm good with that. So I'm waiting for you to do your whole. The whole mess to do my be... thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So, with all of that being said, <laughs> the light is so beautiful. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> you know, guys, re- remember to listen to us on all platform. You know, on Spotify. Apple and Apple, streaming platform. You know, and you know, check us out um, on YouTube, all that stuff. You know, so share.
press the like button subscribe and we will see you guys in the next one don't miss a beat